Nigeria is a very unique country. I think most Nigerians are naturally endowed. Mm -hmm. And that is why you will look at me and think I'm an Ajabata. <laughs> if you know what I went through in life, you, you wouldn't believe it. I lost my father when, when I was only 13. And I was left with my poor, unlettered woman, you know, mother. You know, and uh, she made sure that we went to school. Wow. That's a very, that's a very um, tough background you come from. But it has made you what you are today. For all you know, if you had had a different background, you'd probably be all buttered up somewhere and not even thinking of how oh, to Oh, yeah. All spoiled. Yes, all spoiled. Yes, no. yes, yes. So now, um, away from your background now, we're going into your professional life. What informed your going into um, writing? Well, I would say more of joblessness. I... I finished my master's degree and I wanted to, my dream was to be a teacher. I love to teach because I believe without teachers, we, we won't be where we are today. Uh, unfortunately, at the time I finished, there was an embargo on appointments and promotions in the university, so I couldn't get a job. And uh, a friend of mine, uh, Prince Damola Adiremi, saw the frustration in me and then suggested that why don't you, you know, go into writing. You have a first degree in Yoruba. You have a master's in English literature. It will be a good combination. I never realized I could really write. You know, I didn't have a formal training in writing. But I read voraciously. Was there any particular reason why you went for Yoruba? The impression that people gave was that it, it was difficult to study Yoruba in the university. And, but later I realized that it was an aspect of inferiority complex. A lot of people just felt Oh, if people ask you, what are you studying? And you say, I'm studying Yoruba. Oh, it means that you are a lesser human being. And I didn't subscribe to that. And I'm happy I did it. For nearly 20 years, I was the only Nigerian ever to have a first degree in Yoruba and a master's in literature in English. It, it was only recently that someone on Twitter said, because of me, he was also inspired to do the same thing, so he also has a first degree in Yoruba and now a master's yeah. in English literature. For years, I held that record. It was a world record, and I really enjoyed it. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, good. So now, um, you finished up, um, you started off at Concord. Yes, please. Concord uh, papers? But before yeah. then, that's, I started working at Concord, but I started writing for The Guardian, I started writing for the Sunday Tribune. I was writing articles every Sunday, for example, for the Sunday Tribune. The Guardian, I was writing on the, the, the opiate page, which was very formidable at the time. It was difficult to get on that page. If at the first day my article appeared in the Guardian, I was floating on the moon. You won't believe it. To see my byline by Daily Momodo, I showed everybody. Hey, have, you, have you read Guardian today? And they were paying us only 25 Naira per article, mm -hmm. and we had to wait. I would wait for about four to be published, then I would travel from Ife to Lagos, the Ruta House, mm -hmm. you know, to collect, you won't believe it, 100 Naira at the mm -hmm. time. I actually wanted to work at the Guardian, but I couldn't get a job. And that was how Nukabai now introduced me uh, to Mr. Louis Obi, who was the editor of African Concord magazine. And on the spot, the man agreed to employ me. I've never seen anything like it. I was looking for a job. I got there, and the man came in. Yes, my name is Zelim Omodu, sir. You are Zelim Omodu. You are the man with the tall pen. I thought you would be bigger than this, you know? So what do you want? What can I do for you? I said, I need a job. Are you? You need a job? No, no, no. I'll give you one right away. So can you start now? I said, no, I have to go back and tell my mom in Ife that I now have a job. You know, and that was it. That was how I got a job. You will not believe it. I've never entered anywhere with my certificate. So go and give me a job. a job. I'll just get there and they will just give it to me. God has been so, you know, my kind to was. me. Very, very kind to me. All right, great. So how was your experience like all through your sojourn as a journalist? Oh, smooth sail. Smooth, smooth. Uh, what would you say was your biggest challenge while writing? Uh, it's, I always want to surpass myself. If I write something this week, next week I want to surpass it. And I mean, that's, that keeps me on my toes. I still write it today. I mean, when we started Ovation, everybody told me it cannot survive six months. Mm. 